the North Norfolk Chalk Reef, officially called Chroma Shoal Chalk Beds. It's believed to be the largest chalk reef in Europe, possibly even the world. The reef is 20 miles long, 6 miles wide, and covers an area of 120 square miles. That's larger than the Norfolk Broads National Park, and at 100 million years old, it's been around a while. In 2016, the area was designated a marine conservation zone to protect the habitat, and is one of 91 such zones in English waters. The sea life you could expect to see includes lobsters, edible and velvet swimming crab, pipefish, sea bass, wrasse, tompot blenny, eels, common prawn, starfish, many anemones, and maybe even sea slugs and cuttlefish. It's a truly magical world down there and I'm going to give you some tips so you can safely visit and get the most from your North Sea Safari. Hi, welcome to Sheringham. Today we just want to give you some tips about how to get the most from your snorkeling trip on the chalk reef here in North Norfolk. The chalk reef runs from Weybourne through to Haysborough and you can access it really close from the shore here in Sheringham. Um, it's literally just walking in and you're there at low tide. Um, so we just want to give you some uh, information on how to do this safely and uh, what you might see out here. Um, for snorkeling to be any good here you really do need the perfect conditions which is quite uncommon. Um, we normally only get a few days every year. Um, it's usually sort of late July, August time. We need to have had at least three or four days of really really calm weather. Um, the tide needs to be out so you've got less depth of water and ideally the sun will be shining so it'll illuminate everything better on the bottom. At low tide here um, we have a drift which runs from east to west. Um, so. It's a fairly slow moving tide, but what you can do is get in further to the east than you plan to get out and just let the tide carry you along. Um, I wouldn't advise trying to get in to the west and then trying to swim against the current because you're just using energy unnecessarily. If you want to know the tide times, um, you can get tide tables from lots of the local news agents. There are various apps you can use for this, or you can look at the lifeguards uh, chalkboards outside their stations along the prom. So what do you need? Um, the most important thing to be able to see underwater is a mask. Uh, these provide an airspace between your eyes and the water which helps your eyes focus. Um, they come in all different sh shapes and sizes and prices. Um, you can get this as a single piece of glass which gives you a better view, a nice wide angle of view. You can get ones with split screens which you, you can then get uh, prescription um, lenses put in them. Well I find, I mean I need glasses but I actually find that underwater everything seems to focus just fine. Um, you really want a good seal on your mask, so you want a nice soft silicon seal around here and a decent strap so it's comfortable. Um, the way to put a mask on is you place it on your face and then pull the strap around the back and you can test for a good seal. If you push in and you get suction you know you've got a good seal. Um, one issue I would have if I went snorkeling today is a problem for men. If you do have any sort of uh, facial growth you'll find you'll struggle to make a seal with the mask and water will get in. So I always have a, a shave before I'm going to go in snorkeling or you can get some silicon wax you can just put around here but not silicon wax, silicon grease you can put around here. Um, I'm not a big fan of a greasy moustache so I tend to have a shave. Um, a tip for when you buy a mask is to just get a little bit of toothpaste and rub it around the inside here because um, it will take off that really thin layer of silicon which can cause fogging. Um, other things you can do every time you go diving to prevent fogging is spit in your mask and wipe it round and again it creates a layer that fog can't form on. You can also buy anti-fog spray or you can put a drop of baby shampoo in and just rub it round and again it just creates a film that the fog can't, film, can't uh, form on. There are various types of masks you can get. There are the full face uh, masks which were a bit of a craze a couple of years ago which I'd probably advise against to be honest. Um, you can't dive down with them. One of the features of these masks is they have a silicon nose here so when you dive down you can hold your nose and equalize the pressure so you don't get that pressure build up and pain in your ears which you can't do with a full face mask. Um, they're also quite prone to fogging I believe and I've also heard uh, and read reports that 
because you're not breathing all of your air in and out every time, you're actually rebreathing your own carbon dioxide, which can make you a bit lightheaded. So I would always go for a face mask like this. The next piece of kit is uh, the snorkel. Um, they should have a nice comfortable silicon mouthpiece, a uh, flexi bit here which will fit every face. They clip onto your mask here to keep them upright and then some of them um, have a, a sort of a, a filter on the top that if water goes in they'll close to stop you getting a lung full of water which I'll talk about later. Um, and again they come in all different prices but you get what you pay for with all of this stuff. Next piece of kit you need are fins. These are short snorkeling fins so these give you good thrust. Uh, you can kick quickly, get down to the bottom, swim along nice and fast and get back up again. Um, diving fins are a lot longer, actual scuba diving fins, and they're for gliding and slow movements. Um, you're also less let, let likely to kick the bottom and damage the, uh, the reef or the, the wildlife with shorter fins because they're not so long. Um, another thing worth investing in is a decent wetsuit. Um, around here the water is pretty chilly um, and if you want to stay in for any length of time, um, then I recommend getting a wetsuit. You can get shorty wetsuits, which is just like a t-shirt and shorts, or you can get a full wetsuit, which comes right down to your hands and to your feet. Um, the thicker the wetsuit, the warmer they'll be, but also the more buoyancy you'll have with them, um, which means you'll struggle more to kick down to the bottom and stay down, constantly floating up again. Um, so something else worth getting is a weight belt, um, which will help you get down to the bottom and swim along smoothly. And if you're filming or photographing, it'll help you keep the camera a lot steadier. Um, just be very careful with weight belts that um, you don't have so much weight that it pulls you under the surface while you're trying to swim along. Um, it should just be enough to hold you down while you're down there and then you should be able to kick up and come up easily. They should also have a, a quick release buckle on them. If you do get in trouble, you can just grab that and ditch the belt. Okay, another piece of kit I take down with me is just a small dive knife. Um, this isn't for killing sharks. It's, uh, it's if you do find any fishing line and want to cut it up and bring it up, or if there's a, a discarded tangled net, um, but also for your own safety, so you don't get caught, if you get caught up in any ropes, lines or anything out there, you can, um, if you need to, cut yourself free. To be honest, I've never had to use it, but the one time I didn't take it would be the time I would need to use it. One thing that's crucial with all of this kit is you must rinse it in fresh water when you're done. After every swim, salt water will eat away and corrode anything, especially metal. Uh, the knife will rust very quickly, but all of this kit must be dunked in fresh water and just allowed to dry, air dry. Um, ideally not in direct sunlight as well, but you know, the rinsing is the important thing. It's always nice to record your snorkel um, with some photos or some video. And there's a few things you can use for this. Um, GoPro is probably the most popular. Um, the great little action cameras. Um, the, the newer ones at the moment are waterproof without even needing a housing down to as far as you'd want a snorkel. Um, they take some great quality video. Uh, photos aren't amazing and you can't focus closer than about 12 inches. Um, so, you know, they're, they're more for just capturing it on, uh, on video. Um, you can, mobile phones uh, are great for it and they will focus a lot closer. Um, you can get loads of different mobile phone cases on eBay or Amazon. Um, just make sure you test them empty in a sink uh, before you put your phone in and take them into the sea. I take no responsibility if you get one that leaks. Um, the other option is um, an actual underwater camera or housing for a camera. Obviously the more you pay the better quality images and video you'll get. Um, one technique that uh, is really useful to help you get down to the bottom and swim along and see what we've got here is knowing how to duck dive. Um, so the, the, the trick is you're swimming along the surface, you see something you want to swim down to, you put your, your feet and your legs straight up in the air with your legs straight and the weight of your legs and your feet will push you down. Once you're under the surface you can then kick, but it saves a lot of splashing around and uh, wasted energy. So it's a, a nice smooth way of getting down there and seeing what we've got. There's a few dangers to be aware of when you're snorkeling here on the reef. Um, the first one I'd probably say is just to, to know the local area, make sure you do understand the way the currents go. They won't pull you out to sea, there won't be any nasty rip currents when the weather's calm enough to snorkel. Um, so just, just know what you're doing, know where you're going. Um, there are lots of crab pots off here, um, which you can swim out to at low tide. Don't ever interfere with them or touch them, they are the fishermen's livelihood. Um, but they do have ropes leading down to buoys, which you need to be aware of and not get tangled up in. Um, the wildlife around here there's not a lot that's going to hurt you there's a few compass jellyfish which is a bit like a, a stinging nettle sting maybe a little bit worse so trying to avoid touching them um, obviously crabs and lobsters will give you some of that so don't get pinched by them 
um, and there are weaver fish, which the only problem you could potentially have with them is when you're walking out across the sand, they tend to bury in the sand with their spine, dorsal fin spines sticking out, um, and they'll stick a bit of poison in your foot if you tread on them. Um, they're supposed to be really quite painful, um, and the treatment is to put um, your foot, assuming you stood on it, in the hottest water you could bear, and that will denature the protein in the poison. Um, but if you do tread on them, try and get yourself along to the lifeguard hut if they're there and uh, they will be able to help you. It's always tempting when you're out to, to stay out as long as you can, make the most of it. Um, but don't stay out to the point that you get hypothermia. It is cold here and it does suck the, suck the heat out of your body. Um, so once you start to get to the point where you, you're starting to shiver or even before then, um, get out of the water and, and get yourself warm. Also one thing to be aware of is a condition known as secondary drowning. If you do get seawater in your lungs, if you, you get some in your snorkel and you breathe it into your lungs and you're coughing and spluttering, um, I would get out of the water there and then. Um, and it's probably worth seeking medical treatment or advice if you do because secondary drowning may just cause some discomfort at the time. But once you get salt water in your lungs, um, if there's enough of it, your lungs can start to then produce their own fluid and secondary drowning is where you can actually drown in your own body fluid because your lungs will fill up with fluid from, from yourself. Before you go out snorkeling, always tell someone where you're going, what time you're going in and what time you expect to be back. Uh, if you're not back at a certain time, then they need to alert uh, the Coast Guard. Um, I would always advise going snorkeling with a buddy, um, someone you can go with. It's more fun, you can point stuff out to each other, but there's someone you can keep an eye on each other um, in, case any, in case there is any trouble. If you'd like to know when the conditions here are right, um, please follow my Facebook, my business Facebook page, which is Chris Taylor Photo One, and uh, I'll I'll put a notice up when I see that um, the conditions look like they could be good for snorkeling. Thanks for watching. Have fun.